Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again, and let me go ahead and uh, intro this music, it's gonna be Moss Giver, the song among, the song among branches, um, so this is kind of a mixture between, like, dungeon synth, neo-folk, and black metal, they just kind of rolled everything into one, um, this, I think this just came out yesterday, so it's pretty much a brand spanking new album, and, um, I also forgot to mention this yesterday, um, one thing I've started doing is, um, I found a way to, I, I think it's a reliable way of finding out if these, uh, albums are copyrighted or not. Um, uh, download them, like, download them, and then, and after that, re-upload them. Re-upload them to YouTube. And then, and after that, when it gets uploaded, YouTube will give me a, give me a yay or nay. Um, if it's all clear, then I'll go ahead and use that for my next cast. Um, if not, then I'll deep six, deep six the album and try another. So, if only I had have thought of that a lot sooner. But one, I'm a slow-witted person, and and two, even then, I could see it failing for for some reason. I don't know. Like maybe, like like um, like as in I'm not even out. Uh, I'm not in. I'm not even actually listening to the album. Usually, again, I'll do the cop. I'll do the copyright check that I just mentioned, but not actually listen to any of this. So what might end up happening? No, no. No, it shouldn't. Okay, and never mind, never mind. But I'll, I'll just say I'm just gonna start downloading these and then re-uploading them, and then doing my my own uh, my own little copyright check. So hopefully it works. Um, at first I thought that that um, there might be a glitch in the system or something, but anyway, let me uh, go ahead and get this going. I I've got a fair amount to talk about, and there's gonna be a little bit of moving parts in this. So again, there's probably gonna be a mistake or two made. Um, alright, to start with, uh, this is going to be a big one, until further notice, okay, alright, yeah, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to go with this album, yeah, I'm going to have to go with this album, it's like, too distracting. Okay, but anyway, um, until further notice, I'll no longer be playing Gems of War. So, best case scenario, I'm I'm on hiatus, and um, and because the guild I'm in, they have um, weekly contribution requirements. So I wouldn't wouldn't be able to stay in this guild forever. And the original plan on it was just to was to do just barely enough to meet the minimum. And then just call it good for the rest of the week. But I just got on this morning. Um, I was just about to start doing the delves. I just kind of the same thing with wind jammers too. I just I just stared at the screen uh, and I just I can't do it. I can't do it. So um, I talked to the I talked to the guild or actually I uh, I texted for lack of a better word. Like, not an assault. No, I think I, um, I messaged him on Twitch that, uh, about, you know, what I was gonna, what, it, what about what was going on, just, I'm not feeling the game anymore, so, I'm, I'm into other games now. So, but, but like I said, um, at best, this is gonna be a hiatus. So. Um, But, uh, uh, Guilty Gear Rev 2, it went all right, but, uh, after, after my stream ended, um, one thing I saw on there that I really wish a lot of other fighting games would have, online training mode. 
Like, you know, I mean, you, those of you that have watched me, uh, that, have, that have watched me stream the game, uh, know that I'm on training mode fairly often. I'm on it quite a bit. Uh, but I just found out, again, I found out that there's uh, online training mode as well. Most other fighting games that I've played don't have it. They only have an offline option. Like, your buddy literally has to be sitting right next to you in order to do a training mode with you. So, but yeah, really good to know that it's on here. But, but um, on the downside, online is pretty much dead. Like, uh, I've I've actually tried doing, tried looking for online matches, nothing. Like, like every, like even in even in places where I think there'd be hotbeds of activity, like maybe in North NorCal or SoCal or New York, nothing. Like, like it's just solid zeros. I mean, I probably could have tried Japan. I mean, that's where this game was made. But I'm dead. Way too far away on that. But, um. Another thing I did do is, um. After I watched the, uh, the game movie, they have, like, uh, three bonus episodes. Um. Watch them. Um. First one was basically. Was basically the aftermath. You know, just. You know, like family-related stuff. It's basically dragnet drama, as I call it. It's basically people standing around talking, so not very active. And then um, I watched the 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 second bonus episode. I thought was just at least now. I don't know if they're being serious or if they're just joking around, being tongue in cheek. But uh, um, the second one was about Venom. The guy's a ninja. But in the end, he gets a job as a baker. Which, like, no, oh, man. I mean, Venom's, Venom's weapon is a pool cue. And his projectiles are pool balls. Like, no, man. You make them a, you make them a pool shark. I mean, like, duh. You know? I mean, no, you, you put him on the, the pro pool circuit. You know? He's maybe not have him, like, winning every single tournament or something. But, you know being like this total phenom that came out of nowhere and he's you know he's he gets first place in some places he gets second or third place in other places you know that kind of thing you know he's you know he's a great competitor you know that kind of stuff or make him a make him a trick shot specialist there's there's actual um, there's actual shows that have it you know there's two different types there's the traditional eight ball you know the or the the standard 15 ball, you got the 9 ball, and then you got the trick shot competition. I mean, have, have Venom do something like that. But like I said, I don't, I mean, it's a Japanese game, so I don't know, I don't know if the, if the Japanese were like actually being serious about this or if they're just trying to be funny. You know, I mean, they better like sit over and joke, joke around. Hey guys, <laughs> hey. Hey, I don't know what we can do with Venom. <laughs> he's got okay. He, the guy's like a his weapon is a pole cue, and <laughs> you know what? Like, let's make him a baker. Yeah, let's make him a baker. He can make, make like cookies and brownies and bread. <laughs> oh man, oh man, that was so funny. Yeah, let's do that. You know. So I don't, I don't know. Um, but it just it that was, that was just one thing that struck me. Um, and then um, the third episode, it. Basically, a detective who done it, um, like somebody knocked over the wedding cake or something like that, and um, like the the girl who made it, she made a pact with the devil to keep the to keep the cake from going bad or something, or you know, you know, you know making a pact with Satan to help her make the cake a good one. Or you know, I don't I don't know the whole story. This is one of the kind of like the main story a lot of it I just just uh read over the dialogue and then skipped on to the next to the next piece of dialogue that kind of thing you know so but on the upside though they uh they uh gave me a whole bunch of in-game credits 
you know, so I can buy more unlockables now. I think, I think uh, unlike a lot of other games, you know, uh, like if you if you watch their story movie, you know, you don't get anything. Oh, I'm a, I'm taking a drink of uh, Arizona green tea. Hold on. something else I was wanting to say too. Oh. Um, but uh, in case I didn't say this a few minutes ago, um, the only other game I could think of that has an online training mode was Street Fighter 4. But uh, in that, I think it's called Tutor Mode. Yeah, I don't... It didn't really care... Didn't really care for that. Because it, it's like this... It's like this separate area. Totally different from the uh, the training mode they have. Or, yeah, there's like an actual training mode. Uh, training mode. Online mode. And then... And then tutor mode. Like, it, it's an actual separate mode. I don't... It's kind of hard to explain... It's it's kind of like having a it's kind of like having a nursery in a Hooters. Sorry if that doesn't make any sense, but it I'm still trying to find an analogy for it. But basically, I think having this having this online training mode totally completely separate from the normal online mode to me is kind of a bad idea. It, it just when I first saw that it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, it should, I mean, it should, it should be, it should be part of the regular online mode. That's what, that's what Rev 2 has. You go in, you know, you go in the game, you go to, uh, you go to the online area, and um, it's just, it's simply a menu option. You can choose, you know, you can choose the one-on-one -on -one match, or you can choose the training mode. Like I said, it's just a simple, it's a simple clickable option. It isn't a totally separate mode. I wish I could think of another another analogy. I guess uh, online mode it could be like high school, you know. Online mode could be like the high school the high school foot or the football squad, and then tutor mode could be like the chess club, you know, the where everybody scoffs and laughs at ah ha 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 bunch of geeks, you know that kind of thing. Nerds. Stuff like that. So that's what I first thought when I saw this. But again, in Rev 2, the online training mode is just simply a menu option. So less exploitative, for lack of a better word. Um, and um, one other thing that I wanted to show. I didn't play very long, but um, but uh, when I when I did my tier list, I gave this game, um, Rivals of Aether, a fucking S tier. This is, I, I, I thought this game was freaking awesome. It's a it's a platform fighter, kind of like um, Super Smash Bros. So, let me, let me find him. I'll just grab this guy here. And I think uh, one of the reasons why I like this game was um, unlike, uh, unlike Guilty Gear, in this one here, let me back. I, just, I gotta find it. Oh, and this is one other reason why this game has tetherball. Ah, yes. 
the other thing I like about this game that I think more games need. CPU versus CPU fights. I don't think Rev2 has this, but I not that I'd actually not that I actually looked. But yeah. Cause uh there's I mean a lot of times I just want to sit back and watch. Kind of like what I'm about to do here. But again, one of the reasons why I like this game is uh, it has tetherball mode. So, so that's kind of how that works. I don't really have time to show it here, but um, unlike um, unlike Rev 2, you could um, you could uh, uh, do custom colors on all your characters. Whereas in Rev 2, you could only have I think there's only like 20, 25 color schemes to choose from, and that's it. And I gotta pack up. Uh, I'm not getting any sound. I think I might have to do what I did with uh, Rev 2. Yup. Well, that was a waste. Let me adjust something on here. Hopefully it'll set it up so it never happens again. Pretty damn stupid of me. Okay, but anyway. Um, this game, it doesn't have damage. Instead, it has percentages. Um, every time you get hit, it increases your knockback by that percentage. want to knock them off screen. So. And, um. And you can set the CPU to fight mode. Um. Again, it's mandatory for training mode. And this is my main strategy with this guy. That percentage number going up. Bye bye. But anyway, you kind of get the. But anyway, you kind of get the idea as to how that works. Um. So what I'll go ahead and do is, um, if I can remember to, I'll edit up. 
the part that I accidentally blacked out, I'll just go ahead and edit that out, and then, and then I'll just go ahead and go back and explain to what I, explain what I was trying to explain before. Which, one of the things I liked was uh, custom colors. Unlike Rev Three, I mean Rev Two, excuse me. Oh yeah, and, um, new characters too, so there's gonna be a chance that I might take this game up again. So, you can click one of them, and then you move up and down, and... that and you can do it you can do it for all the characters so there's nothing there's nothing you have to unlock or anything um but one drawback and I got a feeling this is probably one of the things that really accelerated my burnout with this game um Windjammers 2 had the same problem as well the um the online kind of sucks because uh Unlike Rev 2, 1, there is no online training mode. And 2, you can't, um... It's basically... Uh, to be fair, it's a little more customizable than Windjammers 2. But ultimately, everybody, everybody in the entire globe gets crammed into this one mode into unranked mode so and which means they're not being separated by skill level or anything like that so which which means uh, I have the same problem in Windjammers 2 too no no I mean I was I a I will get paired up I will get paired up with somebody who's like an absolute pro and he would just completely wipe the floor with me, or I'd get paired up with a total absolute, absolute rookie, and I'd be wiping the floor with him. So, it's way too random. I think uh, matchmaking needs to be, uh, or matchmaking needs to be done in such a way that you're getting opponents that are, that are around your skill level, or, or with me, a little bit better than me. Like I said, I don't mind losing, it's just, I still want to play, I want to be able to play the game. I mean, you know, if I wanted the serious competition, I'd enter a tournament. So, but no, I'm, I'm still basically in training mode. So. But like I said, when Jammers 2 kind of has the same problem, the entire planet is being put in only, uh, Two different uh, online menus, casual and ranked. That's it. What up? I don't recall seeing this before. Bronze five. Oh, and another thing I really like, although um, I don't think this feature would probably work on a lot of other games. Now, standard issue, standard issue of platform fighting games is uh, you have a uh, each player has three lives. Um, you get uh, all three of those lives get knocked off. You lose a game. But, um... What you can do... You can, uh, turn the stock off. And you can set it to, um... You can set it to a time limit. And then when the... 
And when you do that, the goal actually becomes uh, just uh, beat your opponent as many times as possible within a set time limit, like five minutes, for example. So, which, which uh, you, you can couple that with the fact that I can set uh, everybody to CPU and I can just sit back and watch. That was one of the things that really made this game awesome. Alrighty, um, but that's going to do it for me. Um, I'll just go ahead and call it good here. I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say and uh, and uh, the big time screw up that I did uh, about five or so minutes ago. I got to got to set to editing that. Got to get that got to get that yanked out. So still got much to do this morning. But, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, dropping it or thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And uh, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So. But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time. Bye for now.